Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and welcome to episode 54 of The Knife Guy. If you are new to my channel or just came out of some weird corner of the internet and you have no idea where you are, I'm a knife guy, knife enthusiast, knife collector, knife user, knife enjoyer of many types. We are all knife guys and gals in this crazy knife world, and we all go down our own unique paths, but oftentimes those paths intersect and we experience a lot of the same things. That is exactly uh, what I like to talk about on this um, this series, is uh, I basically just lay out a bunch of knives that are either mine or some of my generous viewers, and I pick them up and flip them or manipulate them and just give you guys something to sit back and either watch or listen to uh, on a, a beautiful either Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon, uh, either or, <laughs> it depends on when I upload it. Um, but um, yeah, so I've got a topic today, one that has undoubtedly been covered like in some way, shape or form amidst some of the other episodes. But, you know, I thought about this and I was like, I don't necessarily have to come up with a unique topic every single time. I can elaborate on past topics, you know, whatever, right? I'm sure you, you guys don't mind. <laughs> it's difficult to keep coming up with stuff, but I know that you guys, you know, there are a lot of people who regularly watch this. And so, yeah, I want to keep doing it. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. If you'd like to check out my Patreon and get your hands on some of these cool stickers, there is a link down in the description to support me in the world to me. So what are we talking about today? So um, here's what I mean when I say I've covered this before. We've talked about peer pressure. We've talked we've talked about knife world elitists, and this is going to be kind of in the same realm. Um, I have actually, thinking back, I've actually been a victim of what I'm about to talk about. YouTube channels, uh, the forums, Instagram, these are the main sources that cause this type of thing. Um, as new people, you guys know I love catering to new people and I want uh, my channel to be a, a source of healthy information for people interested in this hobby. Obviously, this hobby can be a, a money pit, right? And, but there's something about the air of this community or any collector community that results in people feeling obligated to join a club of sorts, an inner circle of sorts. Um, and it's not really sung, right? It's not really something that's said out loud. It's just heavily implied, right? People start off with the gas station knives and then they discover knives can be better. They discover some brands that are a little more expensive. They start learning about the difference in certain types of materials, right? And then you feel more or less obligated to keep going up and up and up and up and up. Some people are completely and totally immune to this and they usually are um, uh, adults who are not easily swayed in one direction or another. I am very much aware though that I do have uh, a few people who watch my channel. There's a, there's a small percentage of people who are uh, younger and nothing against people who are younger because we were all younger once, right? And um, while you're kind of figuring out who you are and the type of things you like, it's a little bit easier to be pushed one direction or another, right? I mean, like you think about this. Here's an example. When you were younger, think about back to middle school. Here's here's my uh, my experience that's just relative to this topic. I remember um, in middle school that um, for a while it was cool to have Nike shoes or Adidas shoes, right? And then K-Swiss enters the arena, right? And then all the cool kids had K-Swiss. And you weren't cool unless you wore K-Swiss. <laughs> Oh, it's dumb to think about, right? But everybody has been a part of this. Either you want to be accepted socially, and so you you break and you buy the K-Swiss, or you you work and earn the money and buy the K-Swiss, or your parents buy it for you, whatever. Or you or you don't, right? If you're if you're a really you know free thinking young person, you look at that and go, this is a fad. I don't care, you know, whatever. And but that's not oftentimes what happened. Usually you feel obligated because of the people who you're surrounded by all the time right? You feel obligated to kind of join the club, right? And so you do that. And it's it's heavily implied by, a lot of times it's directly uh, it implied by some of these other kids that if you're not wearing, you know, uh, look at him, he's wearing, you know, I remember I, I was wearing Everlast shoes in like seventh grade in gym class. And my friends were like, what are those? <laughs> Before that was even a thing, right? And so I was like, damn it. I guess I got to buy K-Swiss or at the time it was Adidas and Nike and then K-Swiss came around, right? So you had, in any, case, in any case, I felt obligated and I was, I did not know who I was. I was not confident. You know, I was, uh, I, I was a young, I mean, I, I was, I guess to be honest with you guys, I was fortunate. I, I, 
um, I, I had a, a good group of friends and I, I was, uh, I played sports, right? And, but I was kind of uh, for a while, like on the fringe of that inner circle, just, <laughs> just struggling to keep up with my other friends, right? And I felt more obligated being right on the edge of that and being on the same team as the, the kids who plays basketball. And eventually I figured out, you know, wrestling was more my style, but football, wrestling, uh, basketball, baseball, right? And so I was always playing catch up. And uh, it wasn't until, oh, honestly, I did that all the way through high school. It wasn't until I got to college. And it's the case with a lot of people. You get to college and you're like, screw everybody else. I'm just going to do whatever I want, right? And then that, you, you, you kind of go down some iffy paths sometimes. Some people do. But eventually, and ultimately, hopefully, the, the thing is, is that you kind of end up thinking entirely for yourself. And you realize that fads come and go. Inner circles are nonsense, right? You don't have to do certain things or act a certain way. Uh, to prove a bunch of stuff to a bunch of people, you can kind of do and think whatever you want. Now, the irony here is that I have a YouTube channel that acts as a source of information for people who are interested in this hobby. And the main goal of this channel, oftentimes, guys, I do these videos as a reference point. As this channel grows, something I constantly worry about is how massive amounts of people coming into my channel will, you know, how they'll view my channel and what they think of the information that's provided and what the purpose of it is, right? I make some of these videos, not only for your entertainment, but as a reference point so that people can go, actually, he's talked about that. Here's his stance on that. And that's kind of what this video is. Something that I constantly worry about is new people coming into this channel and thinking, you know, wow, there's a lot of good information here, but it seems like the stuff that he's really, really interested in, the stuff that people are giving a lot of thumbs up on and really come here to watch is this higher end stuff and particular brands, right? Hinderer, Les George, Strider, Medford, uh, Tony Marfione, Shirogorov, Riot, right? Big names, right? Expensive knives, but big popular brands. Now, as an adult, if you manage your money correctly, you budget correctly, right? You make room for your hobby and you try to do it in a healthy way that, that works out with your budget and doesn't disrupt your life. Unfortunately, even as an adult, that's really not, doesn't, hasn't always been the case for me. It's only here recently with the help of this channel and the generous community and people lending me awesome stuff. Am I able to handle this stuff, scratch the itch and at the same time provide information? So I'm trying to make this a win-win for everybody and help people make decisions. People who are like, I, I, you know, hopefully people coming into it, I, I have this money, I'm interested in stuff, I want to know if it's good or bad, what you think, right? That's the idea. An unintentional side effect of this sometimes is, I, I don't intend to do this, but I, I unintentionally sometimes represent this elitist group that implies that if you have not experienced the Les George VECP flipper, then you are missing out and are therefore not a part of the cool crowd, right? That is bull crap. And that's never something that I want to imply. I love Hinder knives, guys. I'm a just a crazy Hinder fan. And I've collected so many and I, you know, I just enjoy all the different aspects. And I try to push people towards Hinder knives, you know, who I think might be looking for something like that, right? And there's just so many elements about it that I love. But uh, sometimes I'm like, so many people have messaged me and they're like, you know, I, I've only been buying like Kershaw's and I was really happy with those, but you really turned me on to Hinder Knives and you seem to like them and other people seem to like them. So I bought one and then I bought three more. <laughs> and I'm like, that's really cool. I hope I didn't make you feel obligated to do that. I'm glad that you are enjoying them, but I, I want you to actually like them. I don't want people to like knives because I like them or because it seems like my comment section likes them or my Instagram, right? Boy, Instagram really, really has this kind of like, you know, are you following so-and-so? Well, a lot of people follow, follow so-and-so. Like, look, check out all the cool stuff he has, right? That's cool. And then all these other people are like, I check out mine. I, I got I got one that's like this. This the, the Hinder Knives Collectors Group is a great example of that too on Facebook, right? That is very much kind of a club. And I reference that. It's not like a exclusive club. You don't necessarily have to have a hinder to join that group. In fact, I think they're pretty free and open to it. It's good for business, right? Um, but man, like 13,000 people and some of the most drooling hinder knives. I can see somebody joining that group because I referenced it and looking in there and, and seeing like all these people who have these amazing hinder knives and like they join the and then they celebrate like some new person's like bought my new my first new hinder and everyone's like yay one of us one of us like that's cool and that's fun but it's also kind of like 
oh, like we're really making that person feel like if they, you know, don't buy one, then they're not cool, right? And obviously, like there are so many uh, adults who are very sure of themselves, very confident, who look at that and go, I didn't buy one to be cool. I bought it because I like it. And that's good. But there's a lot of people who don't see it that way or don't understand it that way. And basically, the end result in some cases might be, we just made this person feel obligated to buy this $425 knife just to be part of the group. And that is uh, that is super toxic. For anybody who's watching, whether you are um, a young adult or you are you know, a, a full-on adult, right? You're 35 years old and you're just kind of getting into this. It doesn't matter how old you are, I guess. I shouldn't have put an emphasis on younger people. Just speaking from experience as a former younger person, <laughs> an easily uh, swayable former younger person. Um, whoever you are, um, watching channels like mine and, and anybody else's or being on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, you should never feel obligated to buy something because it, you, you feel like it, it puts you in a club. That does, it is a good feeling, right? But it, I think it's healthy if, number one, if you, if you actually have the money for it. Number two, if you are actually enjoying the object. If the object itself brings you joy and you feel like, you know, it was money well spent for you as a person, you should not be paying, never be paying to, to feel like you're, you're a part of something, right? I intentionally, um, re number, number one, I will not review something. I won't even look at it unless I think, in fact, to be honest with you guys, I've got a bunch of knives that I will, you'll see me unbox here in the future. And it was part of the Apex Passern group. And, and truthfully, only about two of seven of the knives was I actually interested in after I unboxed them. And I probably won't be reviewing the other ones. I intentionally choose things that I am enthusiastic about that make me feel good, you know, make me feel excited, right? Because that's how I like to do things on this channel. And I want to help people. I want to push people towards what I consider to be good purchases if they are looking for a knife. I intentionally review things that are um, on the budget end and I intentionally look at things on the high end because I want people to come to my channel and understand that you do not have to spend a certain amount of money to get a good tool and you certainly don't have to spend about a bunch of money just to be a part of the group, right? Oh, that is, is so, so prevalent and it's, it's, it's a conclusion that people can come to so easily without people actually saying anything. And the actual elitists, the actual mega snobs, right? Those are the ones that fuel it and push it. Now, in a lot of ways, I kind of am a snob because I'm like, you know, for for four hundred and fifty dollars, like I, it better have, you know, perfect centering, perfect action. Right. There's a lot of elements. What I say, my own opinions based on my own experiences that come out and the information or the, the implication is a little bit muddied. Right. So it, it's it's easy for anybody like me coming into this. Here's the weird, like multi layer irony of this. Me coming into this hobby as a new person and discovering my own channel, I would inevitably go down the exact road that I am describing right now, saying, <laughs> don't, don't feel like you have to do this to join a club. You don't have to spend X amount of money to get a good tool. I would, I mean, everything, watching my own channel up until this exact episode of The Knife Guy, I would come to that conclusion naturally. I'd be like, gee, seems like all the people who really know what they're talking about, like graduate into this, they at least graduate into the three to $500 mark. And it seems like they're celebrated for it, right? It seems like a lot of people follow these people on Instagram, right? It's difficult because that, I, I am 100% confident that the vast majority of the really popular knife related YouTube channels out there would agree with me in, in saying that you don't need to spend that much money to get a good knife. And you cer there certainly is no like club, you know, it's not like you wouldn't be welcomed if you didn't join, right? But that's, that's oftentimes, you know, what happens. And so, you know, that's, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the message here. All this stuff is cool and I enjoy it. Like I enjoy handling it, but there's a lot of, there's also a lot of stuff that I've handled for the first time and thought, this is really cool, but I'm really glad that I didn't spend my own money and buy this for myself. I'm really glad that this item is coming across my table as a review sample and then being sent back to the owner, right? That's, so many times that has happened. Um, and, and it's not necessarily that's okay. So here's a perfect example. Um, this is a, uh, Marfion custom mini matrix, really cool knife. I've always looked at these and thought that's an interesting knife. That's a really nice looking knife. And I'm, I'm sure it's worth the money, right? I mean, based on my opinion and everything I've experienced, not may not be worth the money to everybody, but handling it, you know, and I haven't reviewed this knife yet. 
I do think this is a good knife. I think it's got its quirks like everything else, but after handling it, I'm like, that's not something I would have spent my money on. But I can see why a lot of people would really, really like that. I mean, it is ultra lightweight. It is very easy to manipulate. It is very thin behind the edge. But after handling it, I'm kind of realizing it's not really my cup of tea. It's not a knife that I would want, to, even as an un, a very impressionable younger me. It's a knife that I probably would be pretty upset if I had bought as a uh, hypothetical ticket into some sort of Marfion custom club, right? Now, the Shirogoroff, on the other hand, um, I have definitely gone down the Shirogoroff lust road and uh, looked at the price and got, boy, that is expensive, but everybody talks about those things and they're so awesome, this or that. And now I'm handling this Quantum and I'm like, yeah, I actually really want that. For myself, not because I feel like I'm gonna be a part of a club, Younger me might have had a different thought on that, right? Different, uh, different outcomes, you know, things like that. It's, it's, it, that's what I'm trying to say is that there are so many knives out there that are are purchased for uh, so many different reasons, right? If you're going to use it, obviously, if you're like, I don't care what anybody thinks, I'm buying, I'm going to buy this because I'm going to use it. Maybe it's based on the recommendation of one or multiple people, but I, the intention is to use it. Or I'm going to buy this knife because I'm an enthusiast. I'm an a collector. I want uh, an enthusiast or a collector. I want to experience it. Uh, it's, it's gotten good recommendations, but I'm not really trying to join a club. I just really want to experience this knife, right? Um, and then I'm not really sure about any of this, but I have this money to spend and I feel like, you know, there's not a lot of people who really care that I exist on social media. And maybe if I buy this knife, it'll, you know, help uh, the community interact with me and I'll, it'll make me feel like one of the gang. Ah, that third one, that's rough because, you know, sometimes on the flip side of this, I know that there are some people out there who just have not found exactly where in the world that they fit in. I know that feeling, right? And, and I had a, truthfully, guys, I had a very fortunate childhood. Um, uh, and, I, I, you know, growing up, I um, enjoyed a lot of things that not everybody gets to experience, right? And, uh, and I completely understand that exactly how fortunate I was with my friends, my family, right? I didn't have what you would consider, what most people would consider a difficult uh, childhood. Not at all. And I think it's important to point that out. But I do understand the feeling of not knowing, you know, where exactly you fit in, not not being confident about who you are. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'm pretty confident about who I am. A lot of it is based on um, just like pig headedness and stupidity. <laughs> I just got to a lot of us come to this conclusion that we're like, you know what? Just whatever. I'm just going to be this way. And if people don't like it, then whatever, you know, and in some ways that's good. And in some ways that's bad, you know, but, but, you know, if you get to that for one reason or another, I, I guess that's, that's great. But the, the, the crappy thing is not knowing exactly where you fit in. And for a lot of people, the knife hobby in and of itself is actually that outlet. Now, unfortunately it can create some pretty nasty spending habits and, uh, that should never be, you know, the, the knife world is a wonderful, uh, a wonderful world filled with a lot of wonderful people. And in my opinion, there are way more good people involved with the knife community than there are bad people. Absolutely. Um, but uh, that being said, you know, people are so ready to help. They are so ready to help people make a decision um, that oftentimes the idea of whether or not that person is actually, you know, should be spending that much money in the first place is overlooked. A lot of times what you hear is, I've got 350 bucks to spend. Help me out. People are, there are so many people who are so good and so interested in helping that they're like, oh my gosh, you should check out this, 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 and this. And, you know, I, I forget to ask sometimes like, do you, do you, what is your reason for wanting to spend that much money? Like, I mean, like, do you, have you experienced knives up to this tier and you're like, should I take the next step? Or like, where, where are you in this? Like that a lot of times is, is what I want to ask. And I, or maybe subconsciously what I want to ask or maybe not subconsciously at all. Maybe it's just a question I should ask and don't even think about, right? And then, you know, maybe unintentionally, I end up helping this person buy a knife for no other reason than just feeling like they're a part of the world, you know? And then they're left with this object that is just a thing that is, it's just a really expensive thing they had and, the, and that they put pictures on Instagram of, you know? Or maybe they use it, right? Whatever. I mean, ultimately, if they end up using the knife or enjoying it, then great, right? But uh, they, they, you know, nobody needs, you don't need, here's the thing. If you um, are just getting into this, right? 
The knife world, for the most part, will accept you no matter what tier you like to buy knives in. In fact, well, let me say this. The people, the good people in the knife community, um, if you're confused about this, they will accept you regardless of the type of knives that you collect, right? Those are the good people in the knife community. They will recognize somebody who collects Shirogorovs and, uh, and, and custom Striders and custom, uh, you know, Marfio and Customs, right? A new person to the knife community comes in and they make friends with this person online and or in, uh, in, in the Instagram world or the YouTube world, right? And this, this, this person has, up to this point has just been collecting Kershaws and some other things. A good, an, a, a helpful, kind, good person will not try to pressure them into experiencing something of a higher tier. And part of the reason I'm bringing this up is because I just did a video called What's So Great About Medford Knives. And I tried really hard to say, I'm telling you guys what I think is good, but this is in no way intended to pressure people into buying these knives. Nobody needs to buy these knives. Um, I just want to correct some misinformation and stuff like that. Um, so that that really helpful person will go, you know, hey, you know, there's 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 tons and tons of stuff out there, and if you want to experience them, then yeah, you know, here's the information. But don't feel like you have to, because the stuff you've got, the stuff you like, if it brings you joy, then you should just be content with that joy. You should do what makes you happy. You shouldn't be doing anything to prove anything to anybody else or be accepted, because the acceptance is already there. There are, there are plenty of people out here um, who are willing to accept you no matter what, right? I mean, we all love knives. That's the one thing that we all have in common as the knife community is that we love knives. Knives make us happy. It's fun to talk about, right? And I hope that there are a bunch of people out there who are content with what they have and maybe they just watch my channel for general entertainment. That is that is the purpose of this, to provide content and entertainment and for those people who are seeking it, um, a uh, uh, you know information that is beneficial and honest, right? If they are actually wanting to make a purchase for themselves and for, for no other reason. Um, wow, I didn't realize I've already been talking for 22 minutes. I think you guys kind of understand where I'm coming from. I hope that this information was received uh, in positive light. And again, I hope it serves as a nice reference point. If this gets brought up, I feel like it will inevitably get brought up in the future if this channel continues to grow, right? What's well, Metal Complex, in it, what's his intention with this channel? Um, but in any case, I hope you guys were at least mildly entertained by this topic. If you were, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.